A few weeks ago, I posted a video talking about my favorite 5551 legendary commanders in Rise of Kingdoms. And in that video, I said this. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop a thumbs up on it, and I will make sure to make a follow up video talking about. 5111 and 5511 commanders and you guys seem to like that video so today we're going to be going over the best 5511 legendary commanders in rise of kingdoms what's going on guys cheers now look i was actually going to post this video like a week ago but chiskel posted a video talking about 5511 commanders and then i was like damn it i can't post it now because people are going to think that i'm copying his video even though all the rise of kingdoms co content creators copy each other and I had already talked about making this video but that's okay it doesn't matter right now if you're watching this video at the time it comes out i'm on vacation and i was thinking what's a good video that i can make that will work in advance okay i can plan ahead of time and i know people are probably gonna find it entertaining so here we go now the first little disclaimer that i want to give you guys is that some of these commanders we're going to talk about i already talked about in the 5551 video in this video we're just going to be talking about commanders that you could use at 5511 and there is obviously going to be some overlap there i highly recommend going back and checking out that video if you haven't already because it's going to give you guys a ton of value especially if you're a free-to-play player and if you find these types of videos useful make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and we also just hit 32,000 subs which is incredible thank you guys so much but i also know a lot of you guys who are watching are not subbed so go on there click that button and with that being said the reason that these uh that these commanders are good at 5511 or equivalent is because it only costs 10 sculptures to summon them 190 sculptures to get the, those skills so 200 sculptures total and you got a great bang for your buck value commander let's jump right into the list and the first little honorable I guess honorable mention it, it's not really an honorable mention because he is actually good at 5511 and that is Charles Martel okay that's why he's on the screen here in case you guys are wondering what's going on there okay Charles Martel 5511 he's very good very usable at that point okay you obviously don't get the expertise bonus but you get 15 percent defense and health which is extremely good for infantry now the third skill you only use that when you're garrisoning your city so you don't really need that in the open field and the fourth skill you still get 10 percent counter attack damage which is nice and it's better at 5511 than pretty much all the epics that you can get in the game so charles martel incredible the reason that he's sort of an honorable mention is because you shouldn't be using your universal sculptures to get him there okay this is a gold key commander that you can get for free just by playing the game and it's gonna take a long time to get him there but the great news is you can actually skill lock him and still make him a primary commander uh and use you know get him level 60 if that's what you plan on doing as a free-to-play player and you get a good uh, value and again at 5511 you could start using him and he's good first we need to talk about the best commander at 5111 and that is Richard okay that is Richard and right now this is the point in time where I think Richard has definitely you know back in the day I thought it was worth expertising him that's how good Richard was in the very early game at this point sure you could get Richard to 5511 and honestly the second skill it reduces damage taken by 15 percent and you get a counterattack damage bonus it's good right it's a good second skill here's the thing though there's really not a great use for Richard in the open field at this point besides killing barbarians and if you are a free to play player and you're planning on expertising isong ye okay and you're getting that circular aoe and you want a primary commander that you can use in kvk even with stronger barbarians to kill those barbs and chain them for long periods of time and sustain that army then richard is your guy and you don't need anything more than five points in the first skill and then one point in the rest yes is there tons of value here that you're leaving on the table of course there is but realistically richard is an old commander and the best thing about him is that he heals your units and he also debuffs five enemies and reduces their damage and for that single skill point getting this first one of five you've got everything you need to have a Richard Esong just slay barbarians in the open field you'll be very tanky you'll get 10 percent of infantry stats you'll get extra healing effect here and you'll be good to go okay moving on to 5511 we have to talk about Minamoto okay Minamoto he's always been decent at 5511 in the late game he's not great okay he's not great but you're going to use him to take down those more difficult barbarian forts when you're in season of conquest however a 5511 Minamoto is actually interesting at this point in time because yes you get a little bit of cavalry attack you get insane amounts of single target damage factor here this without expertise it's 1400 then you have a 50 percent chance of dealing an extra 1200 which is actually still 
really really high over time you also get this 10 percent chance to have them in get 10 percent increased in damage taken for three seconds very good for a single skill point now the downside of this is you have to spend money for them it's money moto okay this is a five five one one costs about thirty dollars if i'm remembering correctly however it's decent because we now have the relic in rise of kingdoms and if you guys didn't know you do not need to expertise a commander in order for them to get the benefits of the relic so once you get the bamboo flute then you get 20 percent more defense and 25 percent more cavalry attack that is that's better than most skills most entire fully fleshed out five point skills right so it's like an addition it's basically like having a five 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 one commander uh at no additional cost so minamoto at five five one one is better now than he's ever been does this mean you should buy him i don't know it's up to you he's still not incredible but at this point he's still worth mentioning on a 5511 list especially because you could just get him like that if you want to moving on to the next commander we're going to talk about is Constantine okay Constantine is basically a staple in Sunset Canyon and Lost Canyon for a reason he has a very interesting and effective primary skill that is going to debuff the target and reduce the damage taken by all of your units in sunset canyon which is very good this obviously works in the open field as well not just sunset canyon but this is where he shines is sunset and lost canyon second skill tons of infantry health which is incredible you get a little bit of extra healing factor on this last one which is very interesting as well and he's got a pretty cool talent spread although at this point once uh cpo legendary cpo comes into the game he's got also gonna have the same talent spread so that's something to consider as well if you are considering a 5511 constantine in 2022 definitely has fallen from grace a little bit especially because um he isn't as useful as he was back when there was less competition now you've got cpo coming to the game you have trajan you have a lot of other things that you could use in 5511 with the support tree but regardless you still see tons he's basically a staple in almost every good canyon team and that's for good reason so 5511 constantine a little bit of an older commander but definitely one that still is worth mentioning next we got to talk about our boy leonidas okay this is definitely one of the best 5511 legendaries in all of rise of kingdoms why is that because all of his skills take effect in the open field no matter what if you look at other commanders like Constantine like Charles Martel like Minamoto right they all have at least one skill that's not doing anything for you Minamoto gives you extra experience from barbs Martel is only has one of his skills is only good in a city garrisons you have a garrison skill on Constantine lots of the commanders we're going to talk about here have one skill that don't do anything in the open field but Millionitis at 5511 all of his skills do something there which is very useful now the reason that you would get a 5511 Leonidas is strictly as a secondary to Guan Yu now this is even better if you're Guan Yu's expertise because of this third skill but even if he's not Leonidas at 5511 is still very good you get extra health you're going to deal 50 percent more skill damage here because Guan will be your primary and will be silencing the target assuming that they you're hitting a target that can be silenced you also get 30 percent extra bonus defense and 15 percent more speed of rage gained what else do you get for a single skill point you get a 600 damage factor shield which is i mean it goes from six to eight hundred like it's basically the same thing and you get a little bit of bonus attack nothing crazy there but also you get a 25 percent chance to increase all of your damage by five percent for five seconds and it stacks if you're lucky so this is a really great open field 5511 commander and really there's not that much benefit and getting like maybe you would want a 5515 maybe but realistically you don't even care too much about this expertise so he's great at that point and definitely one that still is holding the test of time and there's a reason why he is a season of conquest commander that you see a lot especially behind Guan Yu if you don't have Guan Yu mm, Leonidas is probably not a great investment but you can make that decision for yourself next let's talk about Cyrus Cyrus is a really interesting commander in rise of kingdoms that I think doesn't get a lot of love or attention but all of his skills just like Leonidas work in the open field he just straight up everything works okay first skill you deal 1400 damage factor and they take additional damage a 20 percent additional damage for three seconds that's a really powerful utility that you can apply to a target next skill you get 15 percent march speed and 30 percent attack okay that's average that's pretty much what you would expect on a second skill his third skill says when this troops commanders consist of only archers their normal attacks have a 10 percent chance to deal a 100 damage factor over time and 
while that's in effect the target takes 20 percent uh the target sorry deals 20 percent less skill damage now the damage over time isn't crazy right it's 300 damage factor total but it's just for unlocking the skill it doesn't cost you any sculptures to get this and the best part is that the target is dealing 20 percent less skill damage i mean skill damage especially aoe is so common in the open field right now and it's only going to be more common with commanders like cpo entering the game very soon so extremely useful at a single point and then finally his last skill says when it's attacked on the map troops by, led by this command every 10 percent chance to deal damage over time in the circular area up to three targets for two seconds damage factor of 150 and that's i mean that's half as good as it is at five stars right at, at five skill points so honestly you're dealing an extra 300 damage factor to three targets that's 900 damage factor in a circular aoe so in, in the open field you're probably going to hit three targets if you're in a mur murder ball so i mean just for unlocking this you're dealing 900 extra damage factor in the open field i think this is good i think this is almost the archer version of leonidas almost okay he's not quite there because leonidas has just such a good primary to pair with but cyrus definitely one that people sleep on as a good value investment for 5511 speaking of archers let's talk about artemisia okay my favorite the most beautiful commander in the game i'm always simping for artemisia okay look at this all right three targets 1800 damage factor we love that we love that big juicy damage factor on artemisia and she gives you 20 percent defense and 20 percent health you get 40 percent of stats for getting 190 sculptures it's nuts third skill doesn't even matter if you have points here or not because it's just for garrison so in the open field not having this skilled up doesn't matter and the, her last skill says when her rage breather reaches 80 percent there's a 50 percent chance to silence her own troops and at the same time she gets 25 percent increased damage now this is a little controversial some people don't even unlock this last skill they just say hey I don't want to silence myself so I'm just not even going to unlock this now if you pair her with with a, a mana Tore, then you honestly want to expertise both of them if you're going to make that big of an investment but realistically unless she's with uh, a mana Tore, maybe you just want to skip this maybe you just leave her as a secondary and you just don't even unlock this that's something that you could do although you would be missing out on her being a primary with the defense tree and I think the defense tree is interesting for archers and having her be a little bit more of a tanky archer in the open field and that's definitely something that uh you know that's a, that's somewhere where she does in fact shine but regardless if even if you do unlock this right you are increasing your damage by 25 percent for five seconds that's still really nice even though you're not going to be you know doing anything crazy in that time and again huge nice or powerful aoe damage and a ton of nice stats we love to see that for five five one one and she's a great choice for that investment next let's talk about william now william is interesting because honestly I think you should get him to five 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 one that's what I think I think this third skill is pretty good okay it's pretty good however uh you could stop him at five five one one I mean that's substantially less sculptures than a five 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 one right and that's already a value investment so if you really want to keep your your cavalry build as lean as possible then you could totally do a five five one one with William right you're getting that nice it's it's a powerful AoE with a weird shape but it's still good nonetheless 1500 damage factor March speed reduction and their extra skill damage from buffs doesn't take effect if they get hit also you get 20 percent Cavalry uh attack bonus and you get some extra March speed you also get 10 percent extra attack by just unlocking this with a 600 damage factor and it's increased if they're surrounded and finally on the fifth skill I mean we already know why the fifth skill can stay at one right because you know you're getting the 10 percent defense bonus and if you hit multiple targets then you're still going to do the 50 rage per second for three seconds uh for your allied troops regardless of how many points go into the skill so honestly 5511 William is definitely something that you can consider again if you want something very lean very low cost for a cavalry build and in the future you could consider increasing this third skill if you decide to come back and go all in for William moving on let's go back to archers for a second let's talk about Gilgamesh because the moment Gilgamesh was announced I basically was like hang on he could be a pretty good 5511 right which is a little bit weird for a commander that came so late into the game you know obviously when you're in season of conquest you're thinking about what's your next big expertise but realistically we could see you know yes this this skill damage leaves something to be desired right because it's as powerful as Williams except it's a single target so it's it's not great there's no AoE there however you do have the 30 percent enemy health reduction which is really good that's a really powerful health reduction which we love to see and his second skill gives you 
30% archer health, which is nice. And if the enemy is below 50%, your archers deal 20 percent more damage so again this is a 5511 that's good stuff right there that's good stuff now this says the skill is only for attacking cities or strongholds so you don't even care that the third skill is at one and then the final skill right you have a two you take two percent less damage from normal attacks which isn't anything crazy right but you also have a 30 percent chance of inflicting the blood, blood craving debuff on troops that uh you know deals damage when they heal right and this lasts for three seconds it's more than half as good as the as when it's at five right so even just by unlocking this you're dealing 300 damage factor when they heal and like look you know of course there's not that many richards in the open field at this point so that when people when people think healing they think of richard but realistically anybody with a full defense tree is actually going to be healing because of medicinal supplies right so every time you use a skill you actually get 300 uh healing factor right so medicinal supplies applies to the Gilgamesh blood craving debuff what if you inflict the blood craving debuff and then Guan Yu leaves the battle then he heals and he actually takes damage instead is Joan of Arc the secondary for the enemy well then great news they have a 10 percent chance of healing and taking damage from the blood craving debuff oh the Attila Takeda that you're hitting in the open field they actually have healing on Takeda and a lot of people forget about that right and that's going to take damage from from the blood craving debuff so the thing about Gilgamesh like sure this last uh, this last skill with a single point it could be better but you're getting a lot of free damage factor from from that blood craving debuff just by unlocking this skill so 5511 Gilgamesh is uh he's pretty solid right he's pretty solid okay now we're moving into some of the newer commanders in the game okay and we gotta talk about Nevsky I, I mean we have to talk about it he's just he's so good that pretty much every configuration of him is usable maybe besides 5111 right but let's just take a look at this okay you have 2300 damage factor and a nice powerful defense reduction you take a look at the second skill 20 percent cavalry attack 20 percent cavalry health outside of your alliance territory and 20 percent march speed tons you have 40 percent of stats there health is insanely good for calves and for really anybody right you also get 10 percent defense on top of all that you deal two percent more damage to surrounded targets and on the fourth skill you have a five percent skill damage increase and a 15 percent extra skill damage increase after doing an active skill right so there's just so much to love about Nevsky that you know even if these two skills are at one you're still getting a, a nice powerful cavalry commander for 200 sculptures it's it's great value now honestly getting him to 5551 is going to get you 10 percent more cavalry defense and you're going to deal even more damage to surrounded targets which let's be honest if you're in a murder ball you're probably going to be hitting a target that's surrounded right you, you probably are you're all going to be focusing the guan yus you're all going to be focusing the squishy targets and this does play a factor there and honestly this last skill is definitely the one that i would i would probably use the least but regardless you know a 5511 nevsky provides you a ton of value and is one of the commanders that i think is going to age incredibly well i think that even in a year from now or two years from now people are still going to be running a primary nevsky which is it, like if you invest in him now you're going to get value for such a long time and you can start using him at just 5511 and you're gonna have such a good primary commander so Nevsky while I do think that you should ultimately like you might as well expertise him because he's just so good right you might as well but you can use him at 5511 and I had to talk about him in this video now let's talk about Bertrand because he came out at the same time as Nevsky and guess what you could actually use him at 5511 as well okay is he as good as Nevsky of course not he, he's just not okay but let's let's keep let's take a look here okay for the next three seconds your normal attacks have a 100 chance so it's going to happen to deal direct damage to the target with a damage factor of 700 and reduce their rage by 20. so you're reducing the target's rage by 60 because it's for three seconds and it's 2100 damage factor solid single target damage factor with a decent rage reduction pretty cool stuff there he's got the defense tree which is not that common for cavalry actually who else even has that is it Yadviga no she's mobility that's right I, I forgot she's garrison but she doesn't have a defense tree even Saladin who we normally consider tanky uh has the support tree so there's actually no other I mean unless I'm missing something here there's no other legendary cavalries with the defense tree so that's pretty cool that's unique to Bertrand second skill okay you get 10 percent increased attack and 10 percent increased health and you gain 10 percent march speed and five percent reduced damage from all sources when you're outside alliance territory so 
a little bit of tankiness there honestly I wish this was higher I mean for for such a late game legendary I feel like this could be 20 and 20 that's what I think but hey what do I know third skill doesn't matter if it's at one because it's not going to apply in the open field anyway and then the fourth skill when you have this at one you get 10 percent cavalry defense hey nice you get 10 percent extra stats just by unlocking the skill and troops led by this commander get a 10 percent chance to heal 100 or 300 because it's over three seconds so free healing right and that's almost as I mean at max it's at 250 like it's it's close right it's pretty close when it's just unlocked so realistically you're not missing out on too much by leaving him at 5511 other than the expertise right so he takes less skill damage and deals skill damage to the attacker when he does take it so that's nice it's nice because there's so much skill damage and you're going to be taking a lot of it right but ultimately I'm not a huge fan of Bertrand like just being completely honest with you however um 5511 is fine it's completely fine you're getting most of the value out of his skills if you wanted Bertrand I think that would be a good place to stop but again mm, he's not great and like you just go for Nevsky like whatever sculptures you were going to put in here bring Nevsky to 5551 like that's probably the better option and of course we have to talk about CPO okay CPO is just like Nevsky in that he all of his skills work in the open field okay he's so powerful in the open field that no matter what you're gonna have to unlock him he's just just like Nevsky no matter what happens you're gonna have to unlock him he's just so good now also like Nevsky he's one of those commanders where you should expertise him but you can start to use him at 5511 and he's just gonna give you so much value so look 2000 damage factor three target AOE I'd rather it be five but because the damage is so high it's insane and you're reducing their health by 30 percent for three seconds guys Gilgamesh reduces health by 30 percent for a single target and Gilgamesh deals less damage than this AOE like it's literally just an improvement to Gilgamesh's primary skill in every single way in every single way it's not even fair to have him in the game when you have somebody like Gilgamesh like they need to buff everybody to compete with CPO okay second skill 40 percent attack 15 percent March speed and additional March speed outside of your Alliance territory so solid 40 percent of stats we love that now with this skill at one you're getting 10 percent health which is half as much as you would get if this were at five by the way so you're still getting a lot of value just by unlocking this and you have a 10 percent chance of dealing 250 damage factor for three seconds like that's really good again half as good as the full value of the skill just by unlocking it for zero sculptures like that's insane looking at his fourth skill okay reduced there's a 50 percent chance of reducing the damage uh from skill damage by 10 percent and forming a shield that covers three allied troops for three seconds with half of the uh, total damage factor as it would be at max so you're getting a little bit of tankiness here and you're still providing three shields to your allies that's 750 shielding factor right that you're getting for free just by unlocking this and honestly the fact of the matter is that this is going to be so uh, crucial for giving shields to your Guan Yu's in the open field we're going to get 15 percent extra skill damage when a shield is active so just by unlocking this you're helping all the Guan Yu's that are in your Alliance it's really good guys it's really good and again you can always come back uh you can always come back to this and expertise him later because again CPO is one of those commanders that I think for the next year two years he's probably going to still be relevant he's still going to be good he's still going to be a commander you can rely on unless the insane power creep continues at a faster rate than they've ever done it before okay which would be unusual they, we, we like obviously these new commanders have power creep uh, but this is the first time where power creep has been immediately obvious like yes it's been in the game but it's been slow over time this time it's like a spike in power creep like it's obvious that these commanders are better right but to everybody involved so we had to talk about it okay we had to talk about it cpo 5511 great cpo 5551 even better cpo expertise is the best but for the value you can't match it finally we're going to talk about some 5115 commanders this is a weird configuration that is very difficult to pull off you're probably going to need to use skill resets to get this and honestly it might not even be worth the skill resets it might just be worth an, an attempt to get it right but even still if you can pull this off then you can get some really interesting stuff going on so let's talk about tamiris okay her first skill deals a thousand damage factor to the target and then if they have poison stacks which they will because it's Tamiris she deals some number of extra damage factor to them it goes up to I, I don't even know what the max is but it's minimum like 1800 okay so really solid single target damage factor here but the reason that you would want the last skill to be at five is because that's when you have a 100 percent probability of adding a stack of poison to the target which means they will take three percent extra skill damage per stack 
so it can stack up to 15 times which means they would take upwards of 45 percent additional skill damage that's insane when you consider how many commanders in the open field are dealing aoe skill damage right now if you look here this skill doesn't do anything in the open field so you don't even care that this is at one and here you get 10 percent extra attack and you have a 10 percent chance to reduce their defense by 10 percent so you're getting some stats here just by unlocking it but realistically you want that probability at a hundred percent that way every normal attack every single normal attack you're going to apply a stack of this debuff now why is this important well you've probably seen Chiskel's video talk about this and I know Dragothian has made a video talking about this and lots of people have talked about this because it's very cheesy okay it's very cheesy but essentially what you're gonna do you take Tamiris with a single tier one unit and you crash it into an enemy rally or garrison or whatever the case is and even though you die immediately a single normal attack still occurred and that means that you absolutely inflicted a single stack of poison to that target now if you are really close to the target that is getting rallied or for example if there was a rally hitting this uh or hitting my farm here right i could crash this into the rally it dies immediately and then before that stack even goes away i could send out another tamiris and hit that rally and apply a second stack and as long as i'm quick with this right which is easier now with the with the pc version than it's ever been before um but you just keep crashing into that rally and you keep applying a single stack over and over and over again and it only costs you a couple of tier one units not a big deal they're they, 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 yeah sure they die but they're basically free they're so cheap in the late game okay and that's a cheesy little strategy that you can do with tamiris if you're able to get her to 5115 i mean that's really her best use case in the late game right you're not going to ever rally with tamiris in season of conquest at least not until you know maybe the next archer commander is going to have something insanely good that manipulates poison or something who knows but at the point of recording this you would never use her for pretty much anything else so for 190 sculptures that would be a pretty cool little cheese tactic but that's not all because flavius has a very interesting mechanic that's very similar if you get flavius to 5115 then guess what 2300 single target damage factor which is nice if they're less than 50 percent then you're dealing 150 damage factor for the next three seconds which is good so this is a very powerful single target damage factor the second skill okay you're getting three percent infantry attack and that's it because the rest is only for garrisons so you don't really care about that you also get five percent counter attack damage but the rest of this is for garrisons so you don't really care about that the fourth skill is what you care about when you bring him to five bring this to five it's a 100 percent probability that you will silence the target for two seconds this is shockingly good it's shockingly good uh and if you can get a five one <laughs> even if you got a one 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 five if you somehow pulled that off okay the odds of that are so low but if you somehow pull that off you could effectively now of course this there's a seven second cooldown here but if you have a bunch of your alliance mates all do the same thing with different Flaviuses, then couldn't you theoretically silence a target forever like most of the time right and you know you could pair Flavius primary with Tamira secondary again you don't care about the lack of synergy there all you care about is that you're applying these cheesy tactics with their fourth skills right so not only are you silencing them over and over and over again for the cost of a single tier one unit you're also making them take upwards of 45 percent additional skill damage for that same tier one unit that's super cheesy and it's very cheap to get these commanders to that point now there's other things you do with like Chandra Gupta with exhaust stacks and all that stuff and I'm not going to get into all that in this video but these two commanders Tamiris and Flavius they just seem like they're in a weird class of their own where if you could get that last skill to five like you've got a really cheesy commander that you can use to really tip the trades in the favor of your alliance if you could pull it off and you're okay staying online and hitting that same target over and over and over again with a single unit it could be really good you know now that I think about it I probably should have mentioned Nebu on the list earlier as a 5511 I know this is kind of late in the video to throw this in there but honestly you're getting all of his AoE you're getting 30 percent defense with 15 percent March speed third skill you don't care about and fourth skill you actually deal three percent increased damage and you reduce the targets rage by 20. obviously a 5515 is much better for nebu because this last skill is actually really good um but 5511 
totally usable anyway guys if you made it to the end of this video and you found it informative or useful or anything like that make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps me beat the youtube algorithm it gets this video out there also if you're new here or you just double check go ahead and subscribe down there okay i think you might think you're subscribed but you might not be 80 percent of you guys are not subscribed so go ahead and click that button and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni i will talk to you guys again soon peace